Hi everyone, uh, my name is Saurav Sharma and I'm excited to be here to talk about our webinar uh, Async the Product Execution Interview. Uh, yeah, so let's get started and see like how we can tackle that. Yeah, first, uh, yeah, just a little bit of my background. Um, I did my undergrad from uh, back in India in MIT Jabber, MBA from uh, Boots School of Business. About eight years of product experience across Amazon, eBay, and SurveyMonkey. Five plus years of consulting experience with TCS with leading clients like G Capital, G Healthcare, and Charles Schwab. Um, and just a fun fact, uh, I've worked across three different continents, uh, India, um, US, Stanford, and San Francisco, and now in Canada and Toronto. Yeah, uh, that's just a little bit of my background and now we can kind of like dive right in. Okay, uh, yeah, here's our agenda for today. So we're going to talk about, firstly, broadly about what are the different PM interview types, uh, then what does typical product questions look like, some key insights before we get started, and then I'm gonna give you a good structure of how you answer uh, product execution questions, and then you know we're gonna conclude that. Okay, so let's see. So first of all, um, here's like what the typical product management interviews look like. Um, you could have a product sense and design, uh, product execution and analytical, product strategy, and then finally leadership, product leadership and behavioral kind of thing, right? So those are the four main interview types that we can have. And what exactly are you gonna have for your interviews? Kind of depends on the company and what all you know, what all things they have incorporated into their interview uh, styles. So it's kind of like depends on that. Um, it's highly, you know, unlikely that you know all four are included. I mean, at best, you know, I've seen at least three are included mostly. Um, but you know, it might be like possible that some company might, uh, you know, do all four. Um, <laughs> but uh, at least I have not seen that. I've seen at max three of them being used and most um, common ones are product sense and design, product execution and analytical, and then leadership and behavioral drive. I mean, those are the three main ones, but some companies do ask product strategy, but then, you know, they might you know, not ask something else. Okay, let's talk about what for our session today. <laughs> We are going to talk about product execution, right? So uh, we're in this world of all metrics and analytical and you know <laughs> whatnot you can talk about, right? So let's just uh, kind of like dive in. Okay. Um, so even in uh, product execution questions, uh, there could be like different kind of questions which can be asked, right? So you could have you know, like the type one, which is how would you set goals and major success for of Facebook newsfeed, right? Or you can have like Facebook groups usage drop by 10%. What do you do, right? Um, which is the, the type two is more about uh, root cause analysis kind of a question. And the third one, um, which are kind of like tricky, but you know, kind of it, it talks about how do you um, think about different trade-offs as a PM uh, is the third type, which is like you're the PM for Facebook reactions. Reactions are up 20%, but comments are down 10%, right? What do you do? How do you kind of go about seeing like, is this good or this is this not so great? Like, how do you go about debugging that, right? So those are the pretty much three main question types that you can get uh, in your product execution interviews. Um, for our session today, we're gonna just focus mainly on the type one, uh, which is, uh, you know, like how do you set goals and major success? Okay, so now that we understand, like where does this uh, product execution fits in in PM interviews and what we're gonna talk about in our today's session, so let's just get started. 
Hi. Um, so let's talk about some key insights before we start. Um, so the first one you need to know is like where exactly does product execution come up in the life of a PM, right? So, so this actually comes up is is like say once you define your product, what it is, and you know like what do you want to build. Um, next question, which would be is uh, like okay, how are you gonna measure success after its launch? What are some of the key metrics you're gonna use to determine that your product is gonna be successful? Uh, or not, right? So that's where this kind of like comes up. And if you saw that kind of like different PM interview types, so like if defining what your product is, product sense, you know, the next part is like this is product execution, which is kind of like a fast follow uh, <laughs> after that. Um, yeah, the second one is product execution questions are not about like listing all possible metrics, right? So that's definitely not the intent of the question. Um, it's about like how best do you understand product metrics, like whether it's ARM or AARR, you know, whichever you want to use, but like which of that is applicable and why, right? That is the kind of like the main thing. And it's best to have discussion about four to five main metrics than going into a like laundry list of uh, metrics. The third most important thing is that remember um, that you are co-creating your answer with your interviewer. Um, so mostly this product management interviews are all about how can you bring your interviewer along with your line of thinking about the question. Uh, and for that, what you can do is you can take pauses, periodically check with them to see like how you're doing and whether they have any questions or, you know, like they don't, Sometimes they might have some extra prodding. They might ask you some questions of why you think this is the case or why you think that is the case. And that is kind of like important, right? Because it's, you don't want this to be a monologue where you are kind of like just going about it, right? So just yeah, kind of keep that in mind as you're progressing, uh, you know, and practicing your answers. To just like remember to pause, to take breaks, and then answer. Okay. Now that enough of that said, let's look into the actual uh, framework now. Okay, uh, now let's talk about how, what does the anatomy of a good answer for a product execution question look like? Um, say your question is, how would you set goals and measure success of Facebook newsfeed, right? So here's a, like a five step process to best answer this PM execution type question. Um, I would just like to mention that, you know, in an actual interview, this is something which is, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of in your mind and then you're kind of like using this as a mind map to, you know, just go over these and kind of like, uh, you know, make sure that you touch upon all of that and, um, you know, like, kind of get your interviewer aligned with your line of thinking, right? Um, this is not like, you know, you, you'll say like, you know, step one, this, step two, this. This is not something like that, right? So this is just for your uh, kind of like knowledge and so that you are be you're better um, organized when you're answering this question, right? So just kind of like keep that in mind. Uh, and second thing I would say is, you know, like when somebody asks you this question, it's okay to take, you know, like maybe like five minutes to just think about it, you know, jot down some points regarding this uh, kind of like framework, like what do you want to talk about in each of them and think about some kind of like ideas before you get started, right? It's it's totally fine. I mean, it doesn't have to be that you kind of like just jump in right away when somebody asks you, like that's, um, that's not like, you know, if you can, sure, but that's it's totally fine to if you want to take a you know, pause for like, you know, like five minutes just to note down some ideas and then get started, that's like totally fine as well. Okay, um, let's go to the next one. Okay, so step one uh, is all about making sure that uh, it's called clarifications and alignment. 
so this is all about to make sure that um, you understand you know what the product is and how it works before you you know take a stab at defining its success metrics and whatnot right um, if you like kind of like don't know about the product it's totally okay to kind of ask that question and say like hey can you please explain how this product works uh, I'm not that much familiar with it um, that's a totally a fair thing I mean like usually interviewers don't expect you to know everything right all products out there right some if you're familiar great you can you know then you already know about it but if you don't know about the product it's totally okay at the start to just kind of like ask you know what this is and how it works um, because the flip side is that if you make some rough assumptions and you get started and then later on you know if your interview realizes that you don't even understand the product I mean that's a bigger problem uh, than you know at the start of it so just kind of keep that in mind and I think this is also a good time to you know make sure that if you have any assumptions that you're making you know like desktop uh, that product exists only as an app and no desktop version is available in only within the US and not internationally. You know, whatever those assumptions might be, um, it's better to kind of like clarify that and say like, this is what I'm assuming. Is this sound okay? Or, you know, is, 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 do I need to assume something else? Right? So it's just better to clarify that when you get, you're getting started. Um, yeah. Uh, so let's look at uh, step two. So step two is really important as well um, and I think I would say this is the like in step two is the one where uh, you know I've seen you know many uh, potential candidates stumble is like you know when you know when you ask them they're gonna <laughs> just like uh, you know talk about you know how you define success you know like just directly jump into metrics and what they're gonna use and how they're gonna do it and they totally kind of like miss this thing uh this step and i think if you were to miss the step and it shows that you know you are um you know like you don't are not thinking it right right because uh, let's say about this one right so we are talking about uh facebook newsfeed right um like what is the goal of the product right and how does it align with you know company's mission right that's the first thing you need to nail right uh, because you know your product you know depending on the stage of the product it could be that your goal is around acquisition or activation right if it's in a newer product when it's like a little bit mature product you know you talk about more about engagement and retention right and then finally even you know when you have you have you know like you have nailed your acquisition and activation you nail your engagement and retention the next step could be you know like be a monetization right that could be the goal but unless you kind of like align on as to what the goal is and you know what you're tackling it you know like just saying what metrics are you know kind of like is not you know kind of like aligned right so it's very important that you take the time to understand like you what you what what goal are you assuming and clarify that with your interviewer and show that why it's a good fit right that uh, that your goal you're having for example you take the example here of newsfeed um newsfeed has several uh, use cases, right? It's building engaging users, generating ad revenue, and testing new personal and features, right? Um, like to stay healthy, Facebook needs strong user engagement. So I would assume that this is a primary goal, right? It may not be. Like your interviewer might come back and say, like, hey, by the way, we are focusing more on acquisition and activation, right? So that's good because you have kind of like clarified with them like what your primary goal is, and then you can focus on your metrics as per that goal, right? Because that's the whole thing why you know we are doing this in the first place. Uh, on the other hand, if the interviewer says like, yeah, engagement sounds good, like, you know, it's a mature product uh, right now. And I think Facebook's main focus for the products is engagement because engagement finally leads to monetization. So that might be a totally, you know, fair goal to kind of assume and move forward. So great, you have your aligning, you have shared your line of thinking with the interviewer and then it's, you know, okay for you to now get started and, you know, solve the other things, right? So, um, and and then you may say like, okay, how does this align with company's mission, right? So what, what's Facebook mission? Facebook's mission is to, you know, create, uh, is to bring people around the world closer together and help build communities, right? And newsfeed is where you come to know about what your friend or family members are doing. You kind of like comment there, you like it, you share it, you know? So it's kind of like bringing those communities together, right? 
all your friends and families may not be in the same place, you know, same city or even same continent, right? But with this new suite, you're able to stay connected and, you know, you're able to get these this bunch of users closer together. So it's kind of like aligned with what Facebook mission is. So it's kind of like, you know, makes sense that your product goal and company's missions are aligned. Um, okay, uh, let's move forward to the next one. Okay, so let's talk about now step three, which is use and actions. Um, the key step here is to, you know, kind of identify the users of your product and what actions they can perform, right? Because ultimately those actions will help you identify the right kind of metrics to focus on. Um, now let's look at users of Newsfeed, right? So there's, I think, broadly two different types of users here, uh, which are creators and viewers, right? Um, and like, if you think about, you know, like what kind of actions they can take, you know, you can essentially think about what it means for a user to be engaged, right? So creators, what they'll do is mostly in Newsfeed, create those Newsfeed posts, right? Whether it's through just, uh, you know, some kind of like a status updates or photo sharing or some kind of videos, they can do like a lot of this uh, Newsfeed posts, right? And viewers mostly like engage with those posts, either by viewing, commenting, liking, and sharing the post, right? Um, I would say that, you know, it's a good idea that uh, to avoid going into like too much details um, when you're talking about certain actions, like, you know, in talking about liking as a category of action, instead of saying liking a friend's post, liking a group's post, liking an event or liking, liking a comment, you know, you can just leave it at, uh, you know, liking as one kind of action that the users can perform, right? You don't need to go into too much details, uh, especially as part of the interview. Um, and next is, I think, which is, you know, key part of PM's job is to think about how you're going to prioritize your actions, right? Um, so for all the actions th that, you know, kind of reflect engagement, um, if you really think about it, what are the ones which signal, uh, you know, high level of engagement, right? It would be posting, commenting, and sharing. Um, you know, you may say like, oh, what about liking? You know, liking is that I do pretty often, right? But if you think about it, um, liking is is, is is kind of like a shallow form of engagement, right? You see something, you just like it without even reading it, right? So it is engaging, but it's not a, a very high engagement, right? It's more of a shallow engagement. Uh, so if you have to prioritize and your goal, product goal is about making sure that you're driving engagement uh, and that to, you know, like high level of engagement, um, what you're going to focus on is as actions will be the ones which lead to that you know goal of your engagement and in this case that's why we prioritize posting commenting and sharing okay uh now that you have you know done all the step one to step three uh now comes the most important step you know this is like kind of like your main crux um of your this evaluation interview but uh, you know, how you get to this is as important as, you know, what you do, you know, in this step, right? So you know, just keep in mind that you have to explain your thinking as to how you kind of get to this point as well before, you know, diving into the actual metrics and talking about that. Okay, uh, now let's talk about uh, metrics and evaluation, right? So as I was mentioning before, the idea is not to kind of like list all kind of metrics, right? But you should focus your discussion on kind of like the key metrics that you want to focus on uh, as per your product goal and kind of like discuss the pros and cons of each metric, right? Because discussing the pros and cons kind of like uh, gives the interviewer a feeling that you understand that, you know, like metrics, if a particular metric may not be perfect, uh, right? So, I mean, there is always like pros and cons of it. So, and you're kind of like aware of that. Uh, so it's kind of like uh, gives a good impression of of you that you understand, you know, how the metrics are and how they work. Um, so let's look at like, so, you know, in, in this case, I've just given some examples here for, for our discussion. So like um, first one is top line metrics, right? So top line metrics are mostly important, uh, you know, as kind of like, a guardrail. Um, this may not be tied to your, you know, actual 
um, like say engagement per se for new Facebook newsfeed, but it's equally important in the sense that you know whatever changes you are doing as part of say newsfeed, you want to make sure that this top line metric is not impacted, right? So for example, for newsfeed, average revenue per active user, you know, might be one of the key metrics because newsfeed is all about being sure that people are engaged and then finally you know they're able to see ads and that's how you know Facebook. Uh, makes money from newsfeed, right? So whatever you do, you know, <laughs> uh, as as you know, like as a as your PM, whatever changes you're doing, you know, this is one thing which you know your senior leadership might care about. That you know, just let's make sure that this doesn't get impacted, right? So you know, this is just as a kind of like a guardrail there to you know make sure that you're not uh, accidentally breaking something. Now talking about your key. Metrics, right? Your key tracking or engagement metrics, right? Um, you know, I've seen uh, in some of the interviews, you know, people just saying, "Oh, engagement. Engagement means like, okay, let's use common ones, right? Average time spent, DAU, MAU, daily active user, monthly active users. You know, just let's talk about them. Or there could be, you know, um, uh, like session length, so number of sessions. I think." The problem with these, I mean, these are good ones, but you know, these might be good to track at like say Facebook level, right? Yeah, Facebook might be more interested, you know, like overall, what is the daily active users, monthly active users, and how much time they are spending and those kind of things, right? But um, it may not like give you as such you know, specific things that you're looking for from newsfeed product, right? Because uh, your focus here right now is on newsfeed. And these are like pretty generic metrics, right? So for example, uh, I may be like logged into the Facebook and may not be doing anything on newsfeed, but I'm just logged in and I am just doing some say Facebook groups or Facebook events, right? But I'm still counted as a daily active user. So that's why, you know, when you use these metrics, uh, these are like pretty generic ones and, you know, are not pretty specific to the product goal that you're planning to solve, right? Uh, same thing for uh, even average time spent, right? I might spend time on Facebook, we not do anything on newsfeed, you know, just go in somewhere else and watch some um, you know, groups, events, or I might do something there, or I might just like, you know, you know, just leave it open and keep browsing somewhere else, right? So that's why these are like pretty generic metrics. Um, and, you know, like they, these don't kind of like help uh, put you in good light if you're just like talking about generic metrics. Um, so and the next one is, you know, like now talking about deep engagement, right? So comments and sharing, as we have kind of like discussed um, in in our previous thing, are examples of deep engagement because um, you know the easiest one to do is like as part, if you see part of shallow engagement is like likes uh, per day or likes per user. That's easy, right? You see something, you just click like button, and you're kind of like done, right? But for you to comment and to share, you know it shows that you kind of like have read through the post and you understand what it is and that's why you're kind of like doing that, right? So so our focus here should be on deep engagement and shallow engagement. Um, now, you know, you can definitely clarify with your, you know, uh, in your interviewer that what kind of engagement they're interested in and then accordingly focus on one or the other, right? So that's totally fine, but at least, you know, showing that you kind of like understand this uh, is kind of like puts you in good light that you know that, okay, um, what is deep engagement, what is shallow engagement, and then you, accordingly you can prioritize, right? Uh, okay, so then comes, um, and then let's park not star metric for a minute, and then let's talk about counter metrics. Um, counter metrics are something which are important because it, you know, although, you know, because you might think like every metric is just like trending in the right direction, this might be, you know, your something to kind of like watch out for, right? For example, if you're saying comments and sharing is something important and that's a metric you want to use, but what about the sentiment of comments and sharing, right? <laughs> we have all have heard like lots of news about Facebook news feed where, you know, all the comments and sharing can get pretty nasty and, you know, all kind of like negative comments are being put in. So you just want to make sure that you watch out for that, right? Like Facebook doesn't want too much of this uh, negative comments and sharing to increase, right? They want to keep Facebook newsfeed healthy, 
and, and positive uh, and make sure that it's like you know, all kind of users can come in there and engage, right? So they don't want it to become like a pretty nasty and abusive kind of a place, right? So that's why this counter metrics is kind of like important. And now let's talk about uh, North Star metric, right? So North Star metric, you know, as the name says, is like a shining light, right? For your product, like where you know that, okay, this is where my product is going. Uh, and let's uh, kind of like uh, keep, uh, the, you know, uh, this metric uh, in light so that we can all review, right, what's going on. Um, if you think about North Star metric, I think the way you can think about it is like, what is that one metric um, where, you know, like your both the users types, like the, both the creators and viewers are going to benefit as well as, you know, Facebook is going to benefit, like, so what is that one metric gonna be, which tells me about how my product is doing, and also which you know where the users, which is the creators and viewers, and Facebook, all of them get value, right? That's how you can think about a Nostra metric. In this case, um, I've used like comment to share ratio, right? So people are commenting. I know that people are most likely to comment than to share, right? So like using that commenting to share ratio. Um, you know, that might be a good way for us to kind of monitor as to, you know, how that uh, Nostra metric is progressing, right? Um, you know, there might be, you know, depending on, and in this Nostra metric is not like kind of like dependent, uh, you know, like for a product, it always stays the same, right? Dependent, depending on your, uh, you know, like the stage your product is, whether it's in early stages, whether it's a mature stage, whether it's, uh, you know, like now it's a growing stage, you know, the Nostra metric can also vary, right? So uh, this is just like, you know, it's important. Like, for example, in this case, if you use like comment to share ratio, you know, you can just keep in mind, like, you know, how many people uh, of, of, the, of the people that have commented, how many people are actually sharing it, you know, and the sharing is increasing, the, the, so, so this ratio is gonna kind of like keep going up and that shows that, you know, like overall the news feed engagement is healthy, right? So that's why kind of like I choose this metric uh, here. Uh, but in general, um, you know, um, you know, just focusing on North Star uh, is, is, is not what I would kind of advise. It's also important to keep like, you know, all the different kind of metrics that I have here. Um, you know, those kind of categories of metrics, you know, you should kind of keep those in mind and keep monitoring um, because, you know, like there's so many things as you can see here, you know, which are important. Um, so North Star metric is just like, you know, like is there one metric you can use to kind of track, you know, your, pro your product's progress or, or you know, how uh, healthy it is. So it's just for that purpose. Um, I would say like, don't dwell uh, too much on it. You know, overall, uh, you know, your key ones would be, you know, like uh, like there should be at least one in each of those categories that you, you should keep monitoring for, for you to see like, you know, the benefit of like whether your product is uh, moving in the right direction or not. <coughs> okay. Um, okay, now for the final step, um, summarize. Uh, I have seen again, like, Many uh, candidates won't do this. Uh, as you can see here, like we have discussed a lot of things and there might be confusing or puzzling as to you know, you know what you have discussed. So it's very important that in the end you take a moment to just like kind of like summarize what we have kind of like discussed and kind of like make sure that you, you kind of put a summarized view, right? This is just to make sure that you're kind of ending your interview well and you know, like you're not really, you know, assuming that, oh, I discussed so much and interviewer should have got an answer of what I was meaning, right? Uh, you don't <laughs> kind of like leave it at that and, you know, you try to like close it out in a good note, right? So that's why this step is important. So you can say like, so in order to increase news feeds engagement, I would, you know, first look at comments and shares per thousand sessions. These metrics would give us an idea of meaningful engagement for the average user, right? This just kind of like puts it all in a very nutshell way, like, you know, you know, what, what your problem statement was and how did you go about solving it? And finally, what your kind of like summary is. Yeah, um, that's it. Um, that's the end of this webinar. Hope you guys kind of like enjoyed it. And until next time, you know, take care. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.